So I'm going to look at this thing here. This is an HP 400E AC voltmeter. It covers 1 millivolt to 300 volts AC. Also does DBM and stuff like that. So based on 600 ohms. Don't know if this works at all. I picked this up, oh, I don't know, about a month ago now. Haven't looked at it at all. Got it out of the box as far as I got. That's what's on the back of it. I've already said it's 230 volts, so I didn't forget. It's always a good thing to check for. But I don't know if it works, got no idea. This is exactly how it came. It's a bit dirty, needs a clean up. I don't know what's inside it yet, we'll find out. But um, it's got some leads included. That's a stiff wire, wow. Get rid of that. So it's got a power cable, which is no use to me because it's a US cable. I was half expecting it to say HP on it because it just looks like, you know, <laughs> maybe it came with it. This is made in China, so probably not. Anyway, that can go. Don't need that. Also came with this little cable here. An original HP cable. Nice. It's a bit short though. Won't quite reach across my desk. So, before we power this thing up, I'm going to pull it apart and have a look inside because I don't know what the story is with it. I have no idea, so we're going to open the cases up. I'm pretty sure it's just three screws in the top panel. And that will then slide off backwards. I believe this is how this one's assembled. I do like the, uh, the way they designed these things. Or designed these things. There we go panel, nothing exciting there. Where's the inside? Look at that beauty. Isn't that nice? But you see anything burnt in there? See anything blown up? Looks okay to me, I can't see anything there. Sets that board, I don't know if there's any more, there must be more. Let's set the bottom cover off too. So I think this is all we've got to do to get the bottom cover off, is to take this one screw out, I think, and then slide it back. Yes, lift it out. There we go. And that's what's in the bottom of the unit. Look at that. Looks like a user clean. There's a few little bits of dirt and stuff on the bottom of the casing. You can see in here, it's like bits of debris. Don't know where that's from. And what's in the back there? There's transformer there. There's input there. Voltage detection switch, so yeah, I've already changed it over. But there's not much to this, is there, really? An adjustment over here on the side. Probably there from the side panel. Probably take the side panel off and adjust it there. But yeah, it's just what's in here really. Also has adjustment here, which is side mounted, so again, you take the side panel off there and get to those adjustments. Probably some bandwidth changes or something like that, linearity. But it looks nice enough. Here's a fuse over here. Right there. Look at that. Little fuse. Surprising. Well, it looks pretty safer now. I reckon it's probably okay to power up. I don't have to do anything. Shall we risk it? I think we should. Right, I've got a cable ready to plug in because I'm going to use my big sigillant scope to generate a signal to put into this thing so we can make sure it actually works. So first things first, we've got to power it up and see if it actually does anything without going bang. Power switch is currently off, down is off, unfortunately. I wish it was the other way around, but it's not. No power usage right now, as it should be. Let's turn this on. We go up to seven, eight watts. Eight watts of usage. The line indicator doesn't appear to be on. Well, it's so dim you can barely see it. So that neon's had it. But it's sitting at basically eight watts. 
which isn't excessive really. Needle sitting up here. Needle does move. Also a bit of noise in the system here, it's making it flick up. So we'll see what it does like that. So it's actually sensing something. Okay, well let's plug this thing in and see if we can get a signal out of it. Or get it to read out. So let's get my scope set up. I'll be right back. Well I've got the signal turned on. Um, I'll turn it off again. So it's sensing. So 100 millivolts peak to peak, what's that IMS? It's about 0 0.7. So let's do 100 millivolts full scale. So that's there. So it should really be over here. What's my output settings on, actually? One high Z output. I don't think that's right. Let's go... Um, Way over scale. I hit the wrong thing. So that's currently doing 3 volts peak to peak apparently. That's not what I want. I want 1.414 volts. Okay, so it should be 1 volt IMS. It is 1 volt IMS. That seems like it's working. Okay, so let's do um, 0.141. So it's 141 millivolts, so I should be able to do full scale here. It is. So that looks like it's working. This is based on 50 ohms output, so I guess it's 50 ohms input. I should actually look at the manual. Was that 50 ohms input or not? But it says. 600 ohms here, so I'm not quite sure. I guess it's 600 ohms input, not 50. I should probably check that. But I'm using an assumption of, five, of 50 ohms output from the scope to generate that voltage, and that's bang on correct. So it's looking good. It looks like it actually works. Um, so if I do 14.1 millivolts, Could it be 14.14? No, it goes over. Invalid. So yeah, it does actually work, that's good. I'm actually surprised. It works. Might need a better signal source to do some proper testing on this, but um, it's certainly promising. I've got this hooked up to my calibrator now, so I'm generating 1 volt AC at 1 kilohertz. So on the 3 scale, we basically bang on, it's you know, like a needle width out. It's the 1 volt. Look at that. You can barely see it because of the glare, I'm afraid. Yeah, I might turn these lights off. Does it help? It does help. There you go. 1 volt. That's really good. So let's go down to 100 millivolts. So that's about one there, almost perfect. So on a three scale or point three scale, should be on one. It is. It's bang on. One scale, bang on. Let's go down to ten millivolts. So on this scale, we should be there, but we're slightly high. Um, actually, no, I'm on the wrong one. Sorry, that's a three scale. So it should be here. So it's reading slightly high there. Okay. And on the one, it's reading above. Okay, so it's reading slightly high on that particular scale. Which is interesting. It's the one millivolt. Yeah, see, these bottom ones are definitely reading much higher. I'll try sticking the grounding on. There we go. Let's put the guard on on the negative side. That might be helping it actually. So let's go back to the other one again. 10 millivolts. Should have put that up first. So 10 millivolts again. 
there we go, that's getting better. So it's almost on one there. That's with the goal connected. You can see the other end as well. And this one's really slightly over. So it could be some electrical noise causing that problem. One millivolt. So in the 0.1 range. So it should be sitting down here and it's sitting much higher. And on the 0.3 it should be down here. Or 0.003. It should be sitting down here. So it's sitting way up there. So I think there's probably electrical noise. I, mean, I don't have the covers on. Maybe putting the covers on will help it. But it is at least working. So let's do the other end of the scale. Let's do 10 volts. There you go, 10 volts, bang on. Just about perfect. Got 30 volt scale, three on one. 100 volt scale. So it should be on the one, it is. So 100 volts AC. Turn it on, because it does a safety th reset thing. There we go, 100 volts. Bang on, perfect. And on 300, bang on one. It works perfectly. Um, okay. Give it in the one volt. I want to change the frequency to one megahertz. Do one megahertz at one volt. Oh, let's check the accuracy based on frequency, shall we? So one megahertz, one volt, which is high as the calibrator can go is one megahertz. That's basically perfect. We go to 100 hertz. Still fine. And I'll bring it down a bit lower. That's 40 hertz. 20 hertz. 10 hertz. And you can actually see the needle wobbling there at 10 hertz. At 10 hertz as low as I can go. And you can just see it wobbling around. It's not good thing to clean up. It seems to be working fine. And uh, we'll see what it looks like when I'm finished. So there you go. All cleaned up. Looks 10 times better. Really nice now. It all works. At least it seems to. I haven't checked the output on the back, but if the meter is working, there's a good chance the output on the back is working anyway. So it's all looking really good. I'm really happy with it. So it's another tool for the arsenal of things I may want to use. You know, super high precision. Brilliant thing to have. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like the video. And uh, don't forget to click the bell icon. Down here is a playlist to watch that I think you should watch. Playlist over here from YouTube things you should watch. Subscribe link over here if you've already done that. And a Patreon support link over there, which allows you to buy things like this to do repairs and refurbishments on to make videos. So thanks a lot. Good luck.